In-depth interviewing. In-depth interviews are widely used in social research as they can provide a really rich, detailed insight into people's opinions and life worlds. Whereas the structured interview aims to provide a high degree of reliability, standardisation and repeatability, in-depth interviews emphasise validity and meaning. In-depth interviews tend to be conducted with a small number of respondents. This is because they are time-consuming to administer and produce a lot of detailed information which takes a great deal of time to analyse. Rather than using a series of closed questions, in-depth interviews tend to be based around open-ended questioning designed to elicit very full responses. The in-depth interview tends to be more informal than a structured interview and allows the researcher to probe answers and adapt or compose new questions in the light of the information that is provided. High levels of internal validity may be achieved, that is, the ability to capture the reality of the perceptions and experiences of research participants. This technique is similar to a conversation, and interview talk may be viewed as a joint production between the researcher and the interviewee. However, it is more than simply a conversation between two people. An interview has a particular structure and purpose, even if it is at the unstructured end of the continuum. There is inevitably a power dimension and the interviewer, by virtue of their role in this social drama, has some degree of control over the situation, even if, as occurs in some instances, the interviewee tries to challenge this. The researcher decides upon which responses to follow up in further detail, the extent to which they actively engage or passively absorb, and when to begin and end lines of questioning. Within the scientific tradition, great emphasis is placed upon neutrality. At the same time, it is recognised that the interviewer needs to strike up a strong rapport with their interviewee in order for them to feel relaxed enough to reveal information, some of which may be of a personal or sensitive nature. Therefore, according to this tradition, the interviewee and the respondent have to be socialised into the appropriate behaviour so that objective data can be collected. However, many would question whether complete objectivity can be attained in any social research situation. This approach is influenced by the fact that fieldwork was long regarded as a male domain. This is ironic, since historically women were viewed as having a particular aptitude for interviewing because of their supposed superior social and communication skills. In contrast, a participatory approach which mainly draws upon feminist work argues that research participants should be viewed as having a more active role in an interview situation. Letting respondents speak for themselves in their own words is seen as the best way of finding out about people's lives. Life history, Biographical methods provide a greater understanding of the research participant's point of view, as Catherine Anderson and colleagues argue. For example, oral history interviews with women about private matters such as reproduction or bringing up children can reveal what women really think and challenge the official version. A considerable amount of preparation is necessary to ensure that the interview is undertaken as effectively as possible. It pays to do your homework and spend some time researching the topic to be covered if you are not already familiar with it. Also, it is necessary to give careful thought to the location of the interview in terms of issues such as safety, privacy and comfort. For example, it would not be appropriate to interview an individual about a personal or sensitive topic where others may be able to overhear what is being said. The scheduling of interviews is also important in terms of accommodating interviewees' preferences and making sure that the interview does not overrun. It is crucial that informed consent is gained and due attention needs to be paid to protecting confidentiality and anonymity. Interviewees should be provided with an interview consent form which explains the broad purpose of the piece of research, the researcher's obligations and the interviewee's rights. A copy of the British Sociological Association Ethical Guidelines for Conducting Research can be downloaded from the link. There are certain obligations that the researcher needs to follow to ensure that the interview is conducted in an appropriate professional manner. These include working to develop mutual respect and trust, maintaining a friendly, non-threatening approach and showing understanding towards the interviewee, even if they are hostile or you dislike them. 
There is also the dilemma about how involved the researcher should become. Think about different scenarios and how you would respond. In addition to that, it is important to bear in mind these additional pieces of advice. Interview respondents when it is most convenient for them rather than for you. Stick to your word and avoid making promises that you cannot keep. Remember that your interviewees are observing and questioning you too. Provide feedback to your respondents and if possible check the findings with them to see whether they view them as a faithful account. Some researchers send the interview transcript to the interviewee for them to verify and comment on. And finally, remember that there are no rules for respondents and the implications of this. Other practical tips include Always seek permission before recording an interview and explain what it will be used for. Make sure that you use a high quality tape recorder and test it out first. Always make written notes as a backup in case the equipment fails or the background noise interferes with the quality of the recording. As you are conducting the interview, write down any new questions that occur so that you can ask them later on in the course of the interview. And as soon as you can, preferably straight after the interview, write up the experience and your reactions and observations in your research diary.